All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Stever Robbins. How are you doing, Stever? Doing really well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Steve is a serial entrepreneur, top 10 iTunes podcaster, and productivity expert. So today we're going to talk about tips to be more productive in life and in business. So, uh, Steve, you know, this is uh, the beginning of a new year. So people, you know, start making resolutions and all of that. <laughs> but, but rarely do these things ever, you know, manifest in any, any meaningful way. And what are, as people look out at their year, what are some basic um, productivity tips that you would give people that are easy to implement, could be implemented immediately and could make an impact both in their business and in their life? Sure. Well, I, I mean, I want to return to the first thing you said, which is yeah. that this is the time of year that people make all these resolutions. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they usually don't keep them. It, yes. You know, I'm, we're going through that phase at my gym right now. We have 200 <laughs> new members and I just want to go to them. Right. You have to bid to use a locker because yeah. Yeah. You, you haven't been here long enough to deserve the, <laughs> to make my life less convenient. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but so first of all, don't try to do a dozen tips at once. It's not going to work. Human, believe it or not, behavior change is really pretty hard. This is why your best friend keeps dating the same person every time yeah. and, mm -hmm. and it never works out. Uh, so choose a tip that you think is going to make a lot of difference for you if what you want to do is to be more productive. Uh, you also have to know what does productivity mean to you in what context, yes. right? For example, in your personal life, uh, uh, maybe you want to have more friends. So the productivity measure there, you know, is not how efficiently you're using your time. It's how much, or it's not how much money you're making. It's mm -hmm. how much time you're spending with friends. And right. so, for example, you might decide if I want to be more productive at, at having spending time with friends, it makes more sense to have a bunch of friends come over at once. So I will have mm -hmm. weekly movie nights or mm -hmm. game parties or, or a wine tasting so that I can get several people over at once. Or maybe you're an introvert like me and the idea of having several people over at once scares you. Uh, so for that, maybe the measure of efficiency and of the, the output that you want is, uh, uh, is that you want a deeper connection. So then maybe you just decide, okay, uh, in that case, the thing that's going to get me there is to have a regular meeting with somebody, you know, like Thursday night is my get together and socialize with one person night. Right. So every Thursday I'll plan on doing that. So to begin with, Productivity depends on what your outcome is. Right. In business, it is usually, well, if you're a salesperson, it's dollars. But if you do yes. something else, it's whatever the output of your particular job is. So if you want like one, one tip to rule them all, it's know why you're doing whatever it is that mm -hmm. you're doing. This is the number one thing that human brains seem to get wrong is we say, <laughs> oh, I want to go to Albuquerque. So I'm going to start walking. Let's say I'm in Boston. Well, I'm going to start walking west. And we walk west and we walk west and we walk west. And we go, oh, look, I'm going to have to figure out how to get over these mountains. And, mm -hmm. and I need to figure out how this interstate works, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then you end up in Seattle because yeah. you get so caught up in the idea of, oh, I'm going west and I'm going on this road and I'm doing this mm -hmm. thing, that at some point you're just into the whole challenge of, you know, how am I going to get over the Rockies? Well, <laughs> you know, that's an interesting question, given that where you're going is not in the Rockies. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, and, and it's interesting, Steve, because uh, I guess it's, and, and I had this conversation with somebody the other day, and it's like, I, I guess a lot of people don't really know why they're doing something, what the purpose really is. And I don't mean that they don't know their job. Obviously, they know their, the mechanics of their job, but not their own personal purpose. Yeah, and that's really super important. So, um, uh, you know, it's worth taking the time and it's not that hard to do. You can ask yourself, what's the purpose of mm -hmm. what I'm doing? Um, uh, and in fact, uh, the chapter one of my book, um, which is you know, ages, ages old and in internet years. My book was published 9,714 years ago. Um, oh my goodness. Yes, it's 10 years or nine years in real time. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, the first chapter of my book is called Live on Purpose. And what it talks about is like, understand what the purpose is of what you're doing. And you can get to that purpose by asking the question why repeatedly. And, and, and the answer you're after is not a story. If you say, why am I doing what I'm doing? The answer is not, well, first this happened and this happened, this yeah, happened. Yeah. It's what's the reason? And mm -hmm. you say, okay, the reason I'm doing this interview with you is because I want to get my ideas out there. Well, why do I want to get yeah. my ideas out there? Well, I want to get my ideas out there so that 
I can leave a legacy for people and also so that I can attract people to my business, which is get mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If those are my reasons for doing it, you know, why am I doing those? Well, I'm doing get it done groups and this is important to make money. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And why do I want to have a legacy? And that's to feel good, to feel meaningful. And both of those are important. And one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they overweight. Well, first of all, like you said, they don't even know why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. But if they do know why, they're not really laser focused on the why. Because now that we've gone up the ladder and said that the two things driving me are making money and mm -hmm. having and leaving a lasting legacy in the world, yeah. now you can ask the question, is the thing you're doing actually the best way to do those things? Right. So, you know, is, is building get it done groups and being here on this interview with you, is that the best way for me to make money? The answer might be no. Maybe the best way for me to make money is to invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. But I need to constantly go up and down that ladder. And when I say constantly, I mean, you know, I, I do this a yes. few times a year. I don't do it every day. Sure, um, sure. But, you know, to really understand what's the purpose of my actions and then to double check, is this still the best way to reach those actions? Because, you know, mm -hmm. I learn stuff all the time and the way what I learn may change my evaluation of that. And, you know, same thing with the case of legacy. You know, maybe the best way to, to, uh, to leave a legacy is to get involved in some project. I mean, depending on what legacy means to me, but, you know, maybe, sure. maybe I should give money to a charity that's going to save 100 people in a third world country from malaria. It all depends upon keeping those things aligned and understanding you change over time, external circumstances change over yeah. time, and, you know, just the capabilities that you have and the resources you have to draw and change over time. Yeah, because I do, I do believe that I think people, um, a lot of people are doing, say, their jobs every day. And as we said, they don't really, they haven't really thought about what they're doing it and maybe why they're doing it. And maybe they're not happy or they don't feel fulfilled or they're resentful or whatever it is. And I think that if, if a lot more people to, did exactly what you said, just ask the why am I doing this? And if it's, if it's I'm doing it to draw a paycheck to, you know, sustain my lifestyle right now. Okay, that's, that's fine. But at least now you know why you're doing it. So then maybe you wouldn't be as unhappy in your job or resentful because actually you're getting what you want. Yeah. And that's important because people like get really bummed out by like by bosses who micromanage yeah. your things. And like, uh, I'm like, look, you're not in the job to have a wonderful, warm, loving relationship with your boss. I mean, if you have one, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, but if you're there to make money, then the question becomes, you know, you know, now probably you're also there to at least yeah. have a decent time. Yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah, but I mean, exactly what you say is, is, is it's, you know, like, like I have been in situations before where I was in a situation to make money, but I was really having a lot of fun with what I was mm -hmm. doing. Like I used to go to all these conferences, you know, cause I'm like, Ooh, networking, networking, networking. Um, and I would spend 10, $15,000 a year on conferences. And then one day I was talking, I hired a business consultant to help me uh, do some stuff for my business. And she said, by the way, uh, how much money a year do you spend on these conferences? And I was like, oh, I don't know, $10,000, $15,000. And she said, how many clients have you gotten from these conferences? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Let me, let me go look at my database. <laughs> and the answer was zero. zero. So she's like, great. All you have to do is recategorize those from being business development in your brain to being vacation because clearly you're just using them for fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, two things happened. Once I recategorized them as vacation, I realized that this is the wrong thing to be doing to develop business, at least for me mm -hmm. and my business. And then the second thing I realized is if I'm doing these for vacations, for $15,000, there's a lot of different vacations I could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way more fun than going to a Marriott <laughs> in, you know, yeah. in Chicago and sitting in stuffy conference rooms. So. And I and I think no, and I think that's a I, and I think that's a great point. And I think that uh, when it comes to productivity, because um, just like you were saying, like you like going to the conferences, so you went to the conferences, right? Uh, a lot of people in their in their jobs, you know, will focus on well, this is the ta these are the tasks I actually like doing, so I'm just going to do a lot of these, right? And right. and to your point, not saying okay is actually doing a lot of these getting me the results I'm looking for. Is it get moving me forward, or is it just you know? something that I enjoy to get me through the day. Yeah. And you, I don't know if you're familiar with the idea of opportunity cost. Yeah, sure. Th the idea, right, of course, for those people who are listening who don't, who don't know, mm -hmm. the idea is that every minute I spend, you know, making coffee is time that I'm yes. not spending doing something else. And 
uh, I'll tell you that the number one thing that I think small business people do, at least these small business self-employed consultants do when they're starting out, is they obsess over business cards and stationery. Mm-hmm. Like, like no one even uses, well, they use business cards a, a little bit, but you know, and, and what's my brand and stuff. And you know what? If the month that it took you to get your website up, <laughs> to get your stationery designed, blah, blah, blah. If you took that in the same month and from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., all you did was outreach to potential customers, calling them on the phone, sending individualized email, same amount of time, I guarantee you at the end of the month, you would have way more business than you had just by having. And and people would say, well, could you send me your card? And what she would say is, you know, I'm so busy running my business, I haven't had a chance to design my cards. And you know what they're not going to say? They're not going to say, oh, well, then I'm not doing business with you. (laughs) What they are going to say is, oh, you're that busy? Well, let me book 20 hours a week instead of five hours a week with you to make sure I get my allocation. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think that's and I think that's a great point about uh, and I think great one for people to think about uh, what are the things you're obsessing on that perhaps are not uh, contributing? Because you're right. I mean, no, I mean, you've never you've never hired somebody just because you thought, wow, that's a cool logo. I think I'll hire them. Right. (laughs) No. Um, And in fact, I have a really cool logo. Right. This is my logo. It also kind of looks like a superhero, a superhero thing, which is frankly how it was designed um, with with that in mind. You know, and 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 people have gone. People have looked at my business card and gone, "Wow, that's a beautiful business card." I'm like, "I know." Yeah. Um, but they've never hired me on the business, yeah. <laughs> business card. They've I, just, you know, exactly. Um, and the thing is, you know, and I'm, I'm and I say this all the time, probably ad nauseum, if you um, for people who watch these interviews regularly. But but you know, so um, we we talk about today and all the time you hear people say, "Oh, we're busier." busier than we've ever been and I always counter that with saying are we though or are we more distracted than we've ever been because we have these stupid devices shouting at us and we have things popping up and we have access to any information we want so in the course of an average day we we can distract ourselves so many different ways so it's really about to your point again it's really about getting down to what are the things that are actually product you know what are the things that are making an impact and productive and where should you be focusing your time yeah no and and the distraction thing is very real i go to burning man every year uh and up until the last couple years there wasn't cell service at burning Mm. man so you know when you're at burning man like you're um uh uh when you're shoot i was gonna do a cool graphics thing and suddenly (laughs) pop a pop a burning man background and it's it's telling me that i'm logged into the wrong account or something okay anyway (laughs) Pretend it happened. Um, uh, uh, but I go to Burning Man every year. And when I get there, I lock up my phone the first day. I take it out mm-hmm. for one day to go around and take pictures because everyone wants sure. pictures. But basically, and so my brain, and it takes several days for this to happen, mm-hmm. but my brain dehabituates to the constant cell phone stimulation. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because when I come back to real life at the end of a couple of weeks, I feel so real life. I mean, when I come back to modern civilization Mm -hmm. uh, in a couple of weeks, I can actually feel as I start to use my phone again, like, okay, I'm getting amped up, but I'm not calming down afterwards. Like, oh, it's keeping me on. And I can, I can actually feel the change in my psyche. And, you know, and I get used to it very quickly. And I kind of get back Mm -hmm. into this, everything's busy, but it's not a healthy change. And when it's coming on, I can feel how unhealthy it is. But it's very, very easy and seductive, because frankly, these are literally, literally engineered to be addictive. They are engineered mm-hmm. to do the dopamine hits. They're engineered to to distract you, to notify you, to to engage you. But yeah. I don't buy products to be engaged. In fact, I buy products because I want to get everything done, and then I want more time for myself. And mm-hmm. I think this is a huge problem right now uh, in the what we've created. Also, I'm going to be provocative here for a second and say. If you're spending all your time being busy, even if you're being busy at quote unquote high value added work, there's something you're not doing right. Because mm-hmm. because for you to make a decent living and to get your work done, if you actually have to be working a solid eight hours a day, every single day, that means you're the bottleneck in your business. And if you're the bottleneck, you need to find a way to offload some of that so that you have some free time and some space. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, there was, yeah, anyway, there's sorry. Yeah, no, no, I was just saying because they're saying that now it's it's becoming more and more that people are realizing that reflective time is important. Yeah. And you know, put, putting aside everything and, and just 
and just reflecting or thinking because it's almost like as you said i mean with these devices and everything it's like it's we we have no attention span anymore we are our thoughts are if they don't come in bite sizes you know where we can't handle them and all of this kind of stuff so more and more you have to actually consciously start to put aside thinking time which seems crazy but i mean it's it's real yeah it it's it's very real and it doesn't look like doing work right and that's a big mm-hmm. problem yeah. is that if you're sitting yeah. at your desk leafing through a magazine <laughs> It can look like you're goofing off, but that might also just be the time that your brain is needing to percolate on something. And, mm. you know, I'm trying to come up with a proposal because I'm going to make a big pitch to a big client. Yeah. And I mean, there's plenty of science backing this up that we get a lot of our best ideas when we're in this kind of semi daydreaming state, mm. but you can't, you can't suddenly force yourself into it. Oh, I'm going to do semi daydreaming from now until three and a half yeah. minutes from now. <laughs> oh, look, semi day. You know, you actually genuinely have to slow down and relax and, you know, kind of chill out, turn off the phone, turn off the interruptions, put the big red tape on the door that says, if you cross this point, you will die. And, yeah. you know, and then just, just genuinely chill out. Uh, yeah. I tell people, are you, do you are, is the audience here who are listening to us mainly self-employed or do they work for other people? Um, they're a mixture. There's entrepreneurs, there's lots of salespeople. Um, so there's a lot of people. We always, what we look at is um, there are entrepreneurs, people who have their own businesses, people who are self-employed. And then we look at salespeople as the entrepreneurs within a business anyway, because they're the ones who normally have their, either yes. all or part of their uh, compensation, which is variable unlike other people. Got it. So let me let me give a piece of advice then, uh, and this is a joint piece. If you're an entre, if you're an entrepreneur who employs other people, think about this from the entrepreneur's point of view and from the manager's point of view. And if you have a manager, think about this from your point of view as the person being managed. If you're really productive, by definition, that means you get your work done sooner. Now, when you get your work done sooner, what do you do? You kick back and you put your feet on the desk and you read a magazine because you want to get in that good that good kind of mm-hmm. like semi drifty, and don't use a computer during that time that is that will not put you in the same daydreaming state you 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 actually need something that is not engaging you interactively so you know now what does that look like from the outside from the outside someone walks by your office and says look their feet is up are up on their desk and they're reading a magazine we must not have given them enough work <laughs> yeah. right so the bizarre thing is in an employment context productivity looks like underutilization Mm-hmm. And right. if they, and and they're not going to say, oh, we're going to give you a raise. Well, although if you're if you're a commission salesperson, then at least you have your sales, your actual sales figures yeah, as yeah. the measure of your success. But if you're not if you're not like someone where they're tracking the actual sales volume, they're actually going to look at you and go, well, we shouldn't have to pay you anymore because look, you, we're not even using you to the to the amount we're paying now. So that's important to know from an employee's point of view. If you get more productive, close your door once <laughs> you are using all of that free time. <laughs> <laughs> that you just bought back. And if you're a manager or an entrepreneur, do the opposite. Understand that if your people get really productive, then that means they're done sooner and don't overload them with more gratuitous work unless you mm-hmm. also give them a raise and a promotion. Because I happen to right. believe that, you know, if if two employees are twice as productive, or if one employee is twice as productive as the other, it, he should yeah. he or she yeah. should make twice as much money. And it is, a, it is an unfortunate aspect of our salary structure that you can essentially get away with paying them a small differential instead of a large differential. Personally, mm-hmm. I just don't think that's moral. Uh, you know, it's, it's yeah. legal, but I don't think it's moral. Yeah. So there, and I think I'm it's good. And I think, my values on the world. Yeah, no, no, no. I think I'm, I agree. I mean, I think, and it's also, um, yeah, because of what happens at the end of the day is when if you have two people, one is more, one is way more productive than the other, but only earns a slight bit more or whatever. Um, ultimately, the other person doesn't raise up the person who's highly productive tends to go down because they go oh why you know the robot why am i working this hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so i think that's all i mean i think that the reward thing is something yeah that people need to consider and it's a great point i think if you're highly productive yeah um make sure that that highly produ- if you're highly productive that highly productive is coming from you having reflective time, then make sure your reflective time doesn't get taken away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I discovered this at my very first job out of college is I, um, I was a computer programmer and I was one of these people who, I don't know if you've ever worked with computer programmers, but the really sure. productive ones can be like a mm-hmm. hundred times more productive than average. Like it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not linear. I was yeah. one of those. I was one of those people who did more work in a week than most programmers can do in a month. Mm-hmm. And this really didn't work against me. Sorry, this really did work against me because my manager used to come to me and say, well, the rest of the team is working all weekend and you're not. 
And my, you know, I want you in here on the weekend. And my response was, I literally have finished every single thing mm -hmm. I needed to do. I'm done for the week. And the reason they're working all weekend is they write buggy code that has to, that, that takes 25 hours to get working. I don't, I write code that works the second or third time through. And like the con that he couldn't even process the concept. So when I quit that job, I gave six weeks notice. I made this huge list of every single thing that they wanted. I, I said, I want to get, I want to make sure that I leave and give you every single thing. So we went through the spec and said, here's all the stuff I have to do. Mm -hmm. I got it done in a day and a half. <laughs> and and I arranged to have it phased out to our development servers over the course of the six weeks. <laughs> Everyone else was like, oh man, you're getting all this stuff done, blah, blah, blah. And I'm actually sitting here like, yeah, I got it all done in a day and a half. And now I'm just hitting, <laughs> hitting publish, you know, every couple of days for six weeks. But the point is they couldn't tell the difference because I actually was getting the job done. And the fact that I got it done sooner, it honestly wasn't relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was relevant if they wanted to overwork me, but I was already doing more work than any of the other development team members. So I wasn't feeling particularly guilty about having, having yeah. done this this way. Yeah, which is which goes, goes to show at the end of the day is that, um, and I think it's a good point for us to to wrap up on though, is, is that, and I think you started out with this in the beginning, is that I don't think people really understand what productivity is. Yeah. Right? No, they, they, they think it's working more. And mm -hmm. You know, like I want to, I want to have more tools. I want to have more apps. I want to have more techniques. It's not. It's working less. It's what is the minimum I can possibly do to get the maximum possible result. Yeah. yeah. Which means I need to know what result I'm going after, and I need to know which actions are the most likely to get me there. Yeah. And it just seems, and I don't know. So it's a, it's a strange quirk of humans that it seems like the, the fastest route from A to B is the one that most people just can't get their head around taking. If they have to go somewhere else first. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and then once we choose a route, we get sucked into it and we yeah. forget why we're on the route in the first place. You know, I mean, you look mm -hmm. at these. I'm always amazed at these, um, uh, you know, and I watch all the political discussions in America on income mm -hmm. inequality. And you have these billionaires, you know, scraping their nails against the wall in panic and furor over, you know, a 3% wealth tax. I'm like, excuse me. Most people don't even see five million dollars over the course of their entire life. You've got a billion, which is 200, 200 times five million, or maybe you have thirty billion. You know, like, what are you so obsessed about? Like, what is it that you really want to buy that losing a billion or two would make it impossible to buy? You know, Jeff Bezos has actually publicly said he's like, you know, I have so much money, I can't even imagine what I could spend it on. So I'm going to try to inhabit another planet. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, like, I understand you read a lot of science fiction as a teenager, but number one, like, just give it, take all of that money and build schools. You know, mm -hmm. like there is so much good. And you know what, who even cares if it's good? There's just so much other stuff he could do. But he's so trapped into this. I just want to sit him down and go, why? Like, like, mm -hmm. clearly, you have more money than you can even imagine what to do with. Why are you so obsessed with collecting even more? Like, uh, you know, well, it's it, funny. I mean, I think not to, not to get into a major political discussion, but I always think it's funny, especially when you see these politicians who spend 15, 20, 40 million dollars on a campaign on a losing campaign. And yeah. um, and and they're talking about helping poor people. And you think, well, you could just take <laughs> when you gather that 40 million mm -hmm. in, you are never going to win in the first place and go do something productive with it instead yeah. of like just going on an ego trip for a couple of months. <laughs> Pay your staffers. <laughs> like instead of using an all volunteer workforce, pay people, which which was an idea that used to be popular in the 20th century. And for some reason, we've kind of lost this idea that people should be compensated for the work they do. Yeah, well, well, well that, that's one that's going to come back. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. Well, listen, but, this has been fantastic, Steve. Before we go, tell people a little bit more about yourself. It'll all be in the, in the bio and your contributor bio and all the links. But just uh, sure. give a quick overview. Yeah, so uh, my name is Steve Robbins. I am a, a an MIT and Harvard Business School combination combo grad. In case you're interested in in credentials and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, I've been with nine startups from the ground floor. Some moderately successful, some not particularly successful, some wildly successful. Um, and I have largely worked as an executive coach and then also helping to design MBA programs and business education for people. Right now, I run GetItDoneGroups.com which are accountability groups. So for self-employed people or people who have control over their own time, but need some structure and want to have 
some regular check-ins and like kind of do things as a group and have a support system, this provides all of that. And so it's get, get it done groups.com. Um, and that's my main <clears throat> endeavor at the moment. And I do believe that uh, for all of us who've used FTP over the years, we have you to thank for that. Is that right? Oh, well, I mean, you have a lot of people to thank for that. <laughs> However, yeah, there was a company called FTP Software that I co-founded back in the mid-1980s. And if you used uh, if you used personal computers in the 1980s and you connected mm -hmm. up to the internet, it was about a 60% chance you were running off software that I wrote. Oh, fantastic. Listen, Steve, this has been great. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.